What up everyone, it's Lexi and in today's video I wanted to talk with you a little bit about the Loop Deck CT and Loop Deck Live, which are systems that are supposed to speed up your creative process and help you with live streaming. This is Loop Deck CT and this is Loop Deck Live, fully customizable systems for your creative process. But okay, let's start from the beginning of this one, shall we? I have something really interested in here. I feel a little bit foolish right now, but I do have to say this throughout the entire unpacking video, I'm calling it Loop Deck because it kind of feels good for me. Uh, but I just watched a couple of other YouTubers calling it Loop Deck and there were a couple of others that were also calling it Loop Deck. So I'm not entirely sure how to call it, but um, yeah, I, I will probably stick with Loop Deck because it kind of sounds uh, smooth. -er. So inside of this box, I have which is like, okay, I, I don't have to say it, like, this is a really big box for the stuff that's inside, but what do I know? We're gonna start with unpacking the biggest part of this package, and as you can already see the logo, I would like to thank the sponsor of this video, so thank you very much, Loud Deck, for sponsoring this video and sending me those goodies, I mean, I'm excited. You know what, being a YouTuber is actually this. Like, you're being dressed by companies doing stuff and you're really happy about it like I I have spent for my clothing like 50 bucks this month this month this year I just buy my black t-shirt so you guys are happy with me having my black t-shirt so we have another two little boxes here so for this purpose this can go away so this is basically the box and this is going to be a live streaming deck so this is how the whole device looks like as you can see it has a little screen on it that has currently a protective little stick on it there's a lot of knobs and a couple of buttons my current favorite for live stream is actually the uh, Elgato Stream Deck, which is actually cool and I'm using it not only for streaming, but also for my everyday work. I just assigned all of those buttons to different things. And I mean, this thing is something a little bit different in which you can do probably a little bit more, especially with the knobs and stuff like this. So maybe you can, I don't know. We're gonna figure it out. We're gonna figure it out with time. I do enjoy the fact that the cable is not just like normal simple cable it has like the winding all around it if you can see it on the camera right now Lexi figuring out stuff part one you can just like push it in oh that's nice and then it's like that oh yeah yeah I was actually wondering but it's kind of falling off probably it's my fault but oh yeah I get it okay now it's not gonna fall off yeah so uh, I was actually thinking like oh it's just flat so it's kind of harder but now that it's there it's fine it's not adjustable unfortunately but I mean I mean, having something like this on your desk is like kind of, this looks nice, this, this noise. But the thing that I am mostly excited in this box is the Loudpack Creative Tool. It's a pretty big box, you would say, uh, but uh, there is a thing that's supposed to get your editing workflow sped up massively. And it's supposed to also to help you make stuff better, you know, more precise. And I'm excited about it. And of course, the box is also pretty nice. It's just black and simple, has the loud pick on it. I hope you can see it on the camera. Look at this. Oh yeah, that's like fancy. That, that's the new level of fancy when it goes to packaging products, by the way. For packaging, loud pack, 10 out of 10. What is inside is this bad boy. Can you see it? This is just beyond beautiful. And this is the whole setup. I cannot open this more to kind of I don't know what to do with this. So generally, it's basically, yeah, you can say that it's something similar to the live stream thing. I mean, it's just a little bit longer. So live stream thing is like just the top of the whole system, like the, the creative tool. So we have the same thing here, but also we have this really big knob here with an LCD screen, as well as a little bit more uh, buttons so we have the control buttons some arrows and other things that are actually pretty nice and there's a save button which is also good and I'm guessing that you can assign everything as you wish to both of them so that would be really nice we're done with the unpacking and now I guess it's time to do some testing and let you know what I think about it this device is made out of knobs, physical buttons, touch buttons, and a wheel that you can assign to different things, which is a mix and match of things. 
Both of those devices are fully compatible with video, audio, photo and live stream systems. So basically all you need is just to open your Adobe Premiere or Final Cut Pro or Photoshop, Lightroom, Streamlabs, OBS or whatever you are using for your creative process. Just to give you an overview, whatever application you are in, the loop deck will actually switch automatically to the layout that you have selected for this application. So if you are even working between Lightroom and Photoshop, which is happening a lot, you can just switch the window and you will get a switch as well here without any type of pushing the button, switching the app or anything like this. It will just automatically do it because it has an API for all of those applications. Just a really quick note, while I was making the review of this product, they actually came up with the new software for setting everything up. So there's a new loop deck, I think 5.0 or something like this. Uh, now I will go through it with uh, this new information and this new software. So in this new software, they kind of tried to make some stuff easy. The things are though. In some of the applications, like if I go to my Spotify, I cannot even move or remove some of the icons so it's kind of like why i can move this one but i cannot move this one which is like i don't need it i don't want it here i don't want this here at all so i'm not entirely sure what to do with it this is kind of like annoying uh but uh, there's a couple of things that are like okay -ish. so they tried to make a couple of things a little bit easier here so we have some stuff for the streamlabs obs the obs itself so that's nice yeah, so another thing is when you add stuff you used to be that you could just take it out and it's gone now you have to kind of like unassign it so it's a little bit more clicking so i'm not sure what i think about the new software they made a couple of things easier but they made it another things well not so i'm kind of like mm, you guys could do a little bit of a better job here and still yeah you can kind of change things here now so that's that's nice but not all of it so with those you cannot do anything it's like stays like this but it's nice that now you can assign some stuff into those buttons right here it used to not be possible in the older versions of the software so now that's that's really nice uh, because you can just figure out what you want to put in by yourself not all of them this one stays grayed out this one stays get out this one stays gray out that's basically it when it goes to the software it's kind of like there's a lot of things, but still you need to know what they do. If you like hover over them, you're like, what is this? You will never know, you need to figure it out by yourself. So it's still the thing that I don't like. But you cannot even customize the colors of the LEDs and the backlight on those buttons. Well, the thing here is they are purple and let's face it, I, I really like purple, so I really don't mind. But I understand that some people may be actually mad about it because they like other colors. So for me, it's a fine because everything is purple and I'm like, yes, please. You cannot even switch this purple thing here on the watch. It's going to be purple its entire life and I don't mind again. And some of the icons inside of the application of the loop deck are only also purple. Those things, I thought that those are sliders, but they are not. They just tell you what the knobs do. So in my uh, default layout of uh, doing nothing and just starting to work, this is what it is. It just tells me that this is doing the mouse wheel and it's not doing much. Another thing is that even though in the box you will get a lot of paper, none of them literally none gives you an information that there is something like an instruction manual which you can find on the internet so uh i kind of figured it out after having some problems so i'm leaving you the link to the instruction manual down below because any of those like literally any of those should give you an information of you know like we do have an instruction manual not only for the loop deck itself but also for some of the applications and APIs and stuff like this. And it's like, why isn't it in a box? All things considered, I do have a couple of mixed feelings when it goes to the product and I just want you to be on the same page as I am. So let's go through pros and cons. You can customize the main wheel to do different things by a tap, although be afraid of clicking it by mistake. So in Lightroom, you can set up highlights, shadows and the exposure and just work with them with this one wheel or add contrast too. Four tiles setup is also available. 
The system is mostly drag and drop and has some presets which you can just adjust to your needs. For example, throw away the stuff that you don't use anyway. It allows you to set up your own comments in Photoshop and Lightroom. It does wonders with Photoshop and Lightroom actually. It makes color grading in Final Cut Pro easier and I'd say much more precise. It did speed up my initial photo setup after I have set up my separate start workspace. The knobs in general have really nice feel to them and make it easier to work with some of the settings connected with photography and everything color grading. And also you can tap them too. The product itself is really high quality and you can see it, you can feel it, it looks professional on your desk, the buttons feel amazing and the way the product is done is just so good. They give you a USB-C to USB-C cable, so thank you very much Looptek for considering the Mac users so so much. It has an API for Lightroom and Photoshop, meaning that you can set up F30 to F30 on it. Just make changes, set up the comments and have fun. You don't have to look for separate folders depending on what you are using at the moment because it switches between apps for you. If you are in the app that the API doesn't know or if you are gaming, you can set up the main screen that you set up for yourself, whatever you think may be good for a speed dial there. All things good, but what I don't like. The software gives you a ton of stuff to do, but when you search, you better know its name. A written description of what separate things do would be kinda nice. Some of the stuff is just not customizable enough. Some of the options they have don't have the icons for them and give you a text. And the thing is, some of the actions are named the same. Another thing that drives me nuts, the touch screen vibrates. Whatever you click, whether it works or not. And since we're on this topic, I cannot make it work with the Spotify. So I'd click play and it vibrates like it did something, but then nothing's really playing. But it kind of annoys me and I'm like, I want to do things, but nothing is going on, but it vibrates, so it's like, yeah. Why, why you set up the vibrations anyway? Like, I don't get it. It does work with my general computer sound, but it doesn't work with the sound of Spotify and basically doesn't do anything for Spotify anyway, so I'm kind of like confused about it. Also, sometimes it just doesn't work and you need to reopen the software, like close Photoshop and open it again, and then it's like, oh yeah, it works now. I saw someone else's review, he was actually complaining that you cannot make your own icons. And the thing is, you can. I did my own icons, they are absolutely amazing and I like them. The thing is, whenever you have a comment or something like this, it has an icon already. So you need to make a custom comment that has the same comment and just a different picture in it, which is just adding more work for the user, which is kind of like... Nah. Plus it would be nice if I could set up the comments that I really want, like for example in Final Cut Pro if I could have a button for like minus 5 dB and minus 30 dB that would really speed up my process of editing, especially the music and stuff like this, but I cannot set up my own commands in Final Cut Pro or I don't know how to do it and I haven't found it in the instruction manual. I think the thing that annoys me the most is the fact that it's really really hard to work with the software were provided by Loop Deck, and I actually went as far as to watching all of the videos provided by Loop Deck to set up my Streamlabs and the thing was I couldn't set it up even looking at their own YouTube videos so I went to support and by the way we talked about it a lot and then at one point I just said that oh yeah I can do it but my Mac says that it's just not doing it and they're like oh you're using Mac we don't support Mac and Streamlabs together and I'm like oh um, good that your YouTube video said something about it. And to be perfectly honest, I love new things, I love challenges, I like working with the new tech, but it's just taking so much time and as a creator, I really need to speed up my process. This is what I bought it for. I bought it for actually speeding up my process, but I spent the first week trying to set it up so it didn't speed up my process at all. Now, once I finally found out the instruction manual, which was nice, and by the way, in the support, they didn't give me the link to the instruction manual. So again, link down below to the instruction manual, check it out. Um, so it was kind of annoying for me. And at one point I really got mad and went on a rant on my Discord. So just saying, I mean, it should be a little bit more straightforward. If you want to work with the creators, creators want to speed up their work, not to add more work. You know what I mean? It's kind of a thing. But once you kind of figured it out, 
it's it's okay. I, I, I actually like it. I'm just really annoyed about anything that I need to change. Like, if I have to change something, I'm like, no, please, no. So what's the conclusion? I do use the CT a lot in Photoshop and Lightroom and even in Final Cut Pro, to be perfectly honest, when it goes to my color grading and stuff like this. The whole color grading process with the knobs is just amazing. It's amazingly easy. But for some things in like the usual setup, I'm actually much quicker on my keyboard. So when I have my hand above this and my keyboard, I just switch every once in a while, just for the things that are much better on the CT. But for Final Cut, it's not really that many things, to be perfectly honest, just all the color grading, yes. Some of the audio, yes. And my setup, yes. It's like, it's like just starting the whole setup, it's nice. But for other things, it's like, mm, probably not. I did try to use it for my live streaming. Unfortunately, it doesn't work with Streamlabs. So it's kind of like a miss for me right now. Uh, if you are using OBS or if you have Windows, I would absolutely say that this thing is awesome for live streaming as well. Uh, it has the knobs, so that's actually making a lot of stuff better than in the uh, Stream Deck itself. I still use my Stream Deck on my desk because I cannot make the CT work with my Spotify. So this thing actually has a lot of my Spotify things and the Streamlabs system as well. But if you look at the three of them, professional, nice. Yeah, it's a Stream Deck. And I have to say Stream Deck actually has much easier system for people to use. And a friend of mine was describing to me how to make folders and icons and stuff like this through the Discord call, which would not happen with the Loop Deck at all. Like this, this is just like, no, this is not happening. But it looks much more sophisticated. It's much better quality, if I can say so. Sorry, Elgato, I, I really think so. I mean, look at this, it's like noise. But this is also noise, so. I mean, I like my Stream Deck anyway. Now, is it worth the price? If you are into creating, if you are using a lot of Photoshop, Lightroom, Adobe Premiere or Final Cut Pro, it can really speed up your process. If you are having Windows and uh, or using OBS and Mac or whatever, uh, this is really nice. This will really speed up your process. It looks really nice and it really makes a lot of stuff much, much easier when it goes to streaming, especially with the knobs and stuff like this. It's awesome, I love it, I really enjoy it. But if you are just editing one video a month or something like this and you just don't need that much stuff going on, probably not, probably I would skip that for now. Uh, you can start with the smaller one, with the Loop Deck Live, it's actually pretty nice. Be sure to leave me a comment down below and let me know what do you think about it and what do you think could be better or maybe I was unfair towards something just because I'm mad about setting it up and stuff like this. I don't know, it's really high quality, I like it, but there's a lot of things that could get better with it, to be perfectly honest. So yeah, thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to leave this video a thumbs up to help me make algorithm extremely happy. And don't forget to subscribe to this channel for more reviews, FPV, travel and stuff like this. So yeah, thanks very much for watching and I'm gonna see you in the next one. Stay awesome fam, bye.